All right, thank you for joining me on this study of the book of Revelation. We are now in chapter 2. All right, my goal here is to give you the best study on the book of Revelation that you will find anywhere in the world. All right, so let's begin. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that hold the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou, how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Alright, so just a little clarity here. These apostles that say they are apostles and are not, I think it's really important to understand these are were apostles. We that are born of God. We are all apostles. We are all priests. We are all we are all kings. We are all prophets. We are all teachers. We are all servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no man above another man. No man that is exalted over another man. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, this reference right here is simply those that are saying they are Christian, that they are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are not. <clears throat> Alright, excuse me. So, we get this warning all throughout the Bible. This is consistent over and over and over and over. Right, this is not a standalone, unique teaching that you won't find anywhere else in the Bible. This is consistent with everything that we're reading all throughout the Bible. All right. All right, so in Matthew 24, Jesus is asked about the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. And the very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. So also, when we read here, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. All right, because these guys do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're pretending to be Christians. Just as we read in several times, several times all throughout the Bible. I mean, we're warned about this, we're told this is going to happen, and it's happening today more so now than ever before. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And to do the will of my Father is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So we're warned about this over and over and over again. I don't want you to get deceived by ignorant people that are going to make weird claims that aren't supported by the Bible at all. So, let's continue. And has borne them, and has patience, and for my name's sake, has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Now, before we get to verse 5, I think it's important to understand the very first verse in Revelation chapter 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. This is, the angel is a spirit, and the spirit of the church of Ephesus. Alright, that's important to understand. It's, for one thing, I'm telling you right now, it's not a UFO alien. All right, so just get that out of your head. Now, this angel of the church is the spirit of the church of Ephesus, and this is a, a letter being written 
to that church. All right, so when we're reading this, and this is important for later as well, this is not to an individual, but to a group of people. There's very important to understand that. All right. All right, so verse 5, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, however you say that word, which also which I also hate. All right, we're going to read more about this, so let's continue. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. All right, so this is uh, really yeah, it's important to understand it's really simple if you are born of the Spirit of God you have or you are eating if you will the tree of life the tree of life is everlasting life whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ has everlasting life so when you are born of the Spirit of God you have eternal life in you and you'll never die that's never gonna change alright so you are eating from the tree of life okay now um, th this thing with the n deeds of the Nicolaitans Nicola Nicolantes I don't know, <laughs> it doesn't matter um, we're going to get into it's mentioned again and there's really nothing uh, too spectacular to uh, talk about other than to say there's not a lot of information given to us but I think it is important to realize that hey you know the the deeds that you do and the doctrines that you preach they are important and you better not get it wrong alright and that would include myself right so now let's go to the next church unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan so we can get into there's a lot there you know the tribulation I know thy works and tribulation and Jesus says in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world so again and ignorant people that talk about this idea that oh we're not gonna go through the tribulation it's all gonna be you know jelly beans and fried chicken from here on out no 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 we're going through tribulation right now and you're out of your cotton stinking mind if you're gonna suggest to anybody that we're not going through tribulation we all go through it this life this world is full of tribulation in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world I know thy works in tribulation and poverty I mean if you're poor you're going through tribulation right every day you're going through trials and tribulations and all that troublous times now if you're rich <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna enjoy your glorious life now meanwhile those of us that are poor 
will enjoy it later and I much prefer later all right so the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan this is very similar to what we read up here I know them that say they are apostles and are not all right the difference here the apostles are people pretending to be Christians and these people here are people pretending to be Jews and of course they are not Jews and we read here a very clear definition in Romans chapter 2 about what a Jew truly is for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God <clears throat> alright so the if you have respect of persons you commit sin All right so if you're gonna say oh these guys are special because they have you know a big nose and dark hair no you commit sin if you if you say that All right so James chapter 2 if you have respect to persons ye commit sin all right so the, we are all one in Christ Jesus and if you're not in Christ Jesus then you are an antichrist you're either pro or you're against all right and so we can also go to um, the seed of Abraham right to hammer this point home and this is a big deal because there are so many people that are ignorant and stupid and they're just lying when they make claims that people are special just because they were born flesh and blood inherits heaven is that what it says no not even close oh I know kingdom right now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God so just being born doesn't make you uh, saved doesn't make you a child of God even alright so in Galatians 3 verse 16 it says now to Abraham and a seed were the promises made Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and his seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So it never was about a particular bloodline man you're completely ignorant to suggest that and I know there are a lot of people teaching it but it's complete ignorance borders on stupidity it really does I mean if you care about the truth at all you'll examine this and it's very clear very simple and very logical very sens sensible that we are born of the Spirit of God and the, and the seed of Abraham is the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ which we are born into so let's continue All right. verse 10 fear none of these things which thou hast I'm sorry fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer behold 
the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and he sh and ye shall have tribulation ten days there's that word again huh be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life again a very clear indication that we go through tribulation now and the, the tribulation is not equivalent to the wrath of God at all completely separate completely different and there's never a single mention in the entire Bible of the word tribulation that relates to the wrath of God not a single time that be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life now the ignorant will also say that well right there he who endures to the end shall be saved well no if that were the case then Jesus died in vain and this is not what this is saying at all all right so when it says be thou faithful unto death who's it talking to is it talking to you no we already covered this right uh, this is why I said this is very important to understand this is well, well actually that's to the church of Ephesus this is to the church of Smyrna so it, no matter what we read here it's to a group of people not to an individual uh, what is that song uh, you're so vain you probably think this song is about you well it is but in, it's being written to a, a group of people be thou faithful unto, unto death and I will give thee a crown of life alright so the key is faith alright and whosoever is faithful whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved now uh, again we're going through tribulation now and you know I just want to share a quick story here this thing with going to prison if you know somebody that's going to prison and you want to say well they're a bad person well you know what you're a bad person too all right we all come short of the glory of God so if there's somebody you know in prison show some mercy right show a little bit of grace and mercy because you yourself are not perfect you're guilty as well I mean that could just easily as be you you know I think a lot you know I'm, look I don't want to excuse anybody but a, a lot of times it, it's just by chance that people get thrown in prison because a lot of people commit the same sort of crimes and they're not thrown in prison so it's by chance and sometimes uh, you know there you know there's a lot of scenarios here but the bottom line is even if there is guilty as sin remember that you also are guilty as sin in the same sort of sense that you've committed sin you've committed uh, you've done illegal things and heck if you ask me I don't, I'm not even sure what all is illegal I might be breaking the law right now I don't know all right, verse 11 he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death now again um, I want to point to uh, what Jesus says in John uh, tribulation in John 14 I think it is or whatever it is I don't know 16 excuse me in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world so Jesus has overcome the world who is he that overcometh Hey, let's go to first John 5 who is he that overcometh the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God so again he that overcometh how do we overcome we overcome the world by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ 
right? And like in John 11, for example, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, right? So if we never die, then the second death has no power over us, right? Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right? So he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Right? So once we are born of the Spirit of God, we shall never die. The second death has no power over us. All right, let's go to the next church. And unto the angel of the church in Pergamos right these things saith he which has the sharp sword with two edges I know thy works and where thou dwellest even where Satan's seed is and thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth all right, so um, I just want a quick note here. I thought this was fascinating 20 years ago, but now I realize hey, this is Satan is not a a being, and Satan is not a UFO, and Satan is not not uh, just like a entity in one location of the world Satan is all around um, this world and Satan is simply the spirit that is absent of God all right, that's important to understand because once you understand that you realize you know you pull the curtains back and, and there's there's really nobody there it's just the absence of God and so when it's talking about where Satan's seat is it's talking about a man that is absent of God okay and so like for example we go to um, let's go to Matthew 4 real quickly and we see that the devil takes Jesus up to the holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple now Again, this is a man that is absent of God operating in a spirit that is absent of God. And whether it's the devil, Satan, the dragon, the old serpent, it's all the same thing. A spirit that is absent of God. And of course, in these uh, examples here, these are just, um, you know, uh, man, like in in the book of Job, for example, a man that is absent of God. All right, let's go there real quick, just to give an example. It's not a UFO alien. All right, just get that out of your head right now. All right, so let's highlight the word. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. All right, so this Satan obviously was not a son of God, and therefore he was a man that was absent of the Spirit of God. All right, so that's all that means. All right, so let's go back down. Oh, I was there, wasn't I? Right there, and where Satan's seat is. Okay, so there's really no reason to make too big of a deal out of this. Alright? If you understand things in a simple manner, then you realize, hey, the Word of God is pretty simple. Alright? It's not rocket science. Alright? And this is important. It really is. Because even the Bible says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So you don't have to have a 3,000 IQ. You don't have to have lots of money and go to you know, 12 years of Bible college. You know, and all this sort of nonsense. 
all you have to do is believe the Bible that you read. Believe these are the words from God. All right, verse 14, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. So to me, this is important to understand that, you know, the deeds and the doctrines that are false, that are bad, that's that should be taken serious. So it should be taken serious, the deeds that you do and the doctrines that you preach. All right. That's what I'm getting out of this. And I used to really wonder, I wonder what the, I mean, I remember before I was even a Christian, I asked somebody this question, what is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? And I don't remember what the, the lady I talked to on the phone, I called some lady, right? I don't know, remember what she said exactly. But uh, other than to say, she said that it's a little, I don't know, how, to, how does she explain this? Um, it's not important to the message that's being preached. Something to that effect. And um, as much as you, you know, you can study all you want, um, that's really true because it doesn't matter. What matters is that we take our deeds and our doctrines very seriously. You can speculate. I think you're wasting your time speculating on whether it's Nicodemus or Nicholas or even uh, who was that other guy I forget now I thought there was another guy uh, it doesn't matter you can speculate on that it doesn't matter because the important thing here that's being taught is the fact that doctrines should be taken seriously as well as your deeds right okay repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receives it. All right, so we really we get some very interesting clues, if you will, some very interesting uh, details that we really don't uh, get a whole lot of in the rest of the Bible. Hidden manna. Of course, Jesus is the manna from heaven. And uh, so the hidden manna here is the everlasting life, the Spirit of God, which is hidden from those that do not believe. It's hidden from those that uh, reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, Jesus is available to everybody, but not everybody believes in Him. And this is condemnation. Condemnation. That light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Right? So, this hidden manna, it's hidden from those that are in the dark. They can't see. And, of course, it's made known to us, whose eyes are open, that we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we that are born of the Spirit of God. All right, so it's a, just to me it's interesting, right? And um, the stone with a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receives it. So, uh, very interesting. Okay, let's go to the next verse. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write these things, saith the Son of God, who has his eyes like a, unto a flame of fire. 
and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience. And I know thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Alright, two things here. So first of all, we notice a similarity here with the doctrine of Balaam, right? They eat things sacrificed unto idols and commit fornication. So there's a lot of similarity there. And then, of course, uh, this mention of great tribulation, which if we did a... Uh, Oops, we'll do a really quick here, possibly. Great Tribulation. We can get that those two words mentioned <clears throat> in uh, four different verses here. All right. We see Great Tribulation here in Revelation 7. We'll be get to that in about five days, right? And right here it is in, in uh, Revelation 2. And then there's no really correlation there. And then, of course, Great Tribulation in Matthew 24. Alright, um, so it's important again to understand that this is to the church in Thyra. 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 Oh, I can't say that word. Thyra. 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 Whatever that word is. Okay, so... Uh -uh. This is talking to a group of people, not to an individual uh, like you or like me, but to a group of people. And so when it says, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her, it's talking to a group of people into great tribulation. All right, so this is in a, you know, if you think of this was. Uh, written 2,000 years ago and um, this is to a group of people and that if you uh, you know if you commit fornication with her you're gonna go into you as a group of people are gonna go into great tribulation with her except you repent of your deeds all right so this is not at all about you know um, the Great Tribulation is never ever mentioned as the wrath of God. All right, it tr it's trouble here on this earth. All right, we are all going through it, and you know we all go through it at different levels, at different times, and that sort of thing. But uh, it's never ever mentioned in correlation or is as in uh, somehow a uh, the wrath of God that comes at the end of the world. All right, so I just want to point that out. And I think it's important. I really do. All right. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Right, and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am He which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So that's a stern warning right there very serious warning right there but unto you I say and unto the rest in Thyatira as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak I will put upon you none other burden but that which ye have already hold fast till I come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him 
will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Right, so a couple of things here I think um, really important to understand here. Number one, you are not going to be uh, reigning and ruling over a bunch of unsaved people. All right, if that's what you think you're thinking all right so it's important to understand first of all that if you are born of the Spirit of God right now you are a king unto God and so you're a king in heaven while you're still on earth you're not like the kings of this earth but you're a king in heaven and when it says he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter shall they be broken shivers as I have received of my father and I will give him the morning star right, where, is, where is I at here and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations so there's a couple of ways to look at this really to him will I give power over the nations so you have to think of this in the sense that in the life to come yeah when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we transformed into our glorified bodies there are not gonna be any more unsaved people All right so you have to get that idea out of your head that you're somehow gonna be the Donald Trump of the world to come and you're gonna be Hiring and firing people left and right and what, you know, whatever, I don't know, whatever. Right? The power that we have over the nations right now is a spiritual power. I mean, think about it. We can never die. How powerful is that? We have God on our side. How powerful is that? And we uh, have great authority because our authority comes from God. And, and so on and so forth so so when we have when, you know, when we have uh, everlasting life in us we have great power over over the nations All right? pretty I think people underestimate uh, the significance of being born of the Spirit of God and how great that is I really do because if you understood that then you would I think in my opinion you would understand greater how much God loves us and how much power he has given us right now I mean think about it whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die well you can never die think about that that's very powerful stuff the Word of God is powerful just the Word of God is powerful powerful am I even close on this yes for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart that's crazy powerful all right, and then one last thing I'll end it on this the morning star isn't this interesting the morning star and I will give him the morning star all right and so you think about this in a couple of ways and I will give him the morning star let's go to Revelation 22 real quick and I Jesus have sit my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star so Jesus is eternal life and we are given the morning star 
when we are born of God because Jesus is God so we are God's children and because Jesus has the morning star we have the morning star also we are one in Christ Jesus this represents eternal life I think that's pretty simple pretty easy to understand right now just to give you an example of how wicked these Bible perversions are I want you to see something talking about Lucifer calling Lucifer the morning star alright so if Jesus is oops, let's go back to Jesus All right, and not it's not just that oops, it's not just that Jesus is the morning star it also says that he will give us the morning star and then of course is that the spirit of Lucifer well according to these modern perversions it's the same thing there's no way to distinguish the difference how did you come to fall from the heavens Jesus huh? you the bright morning star Jesus have fallen from the sky I mean this is disgusting stuff really you were like the morning star but you okay like the morning star okay I don't know about that but how have you fallen from heaven you bright stinky morning star I mean come on man this is a problem a serious serious problem and of course the obvious reason why they do this is because they want to abide by copyright laws so that they can sell or peddle their Bible versions and make money and of course we're warned about this right I could go on for another half an hour talking about this the insanity of them all these modern perversions go to 2nd Corinthians and then I'll close it here 2nd Corinthians uh, chapter 2 verse 17 for we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God and that's important right because if it's from God it's got to be perfect it's got to be perfect otherwise you can't believe it right and so that that's an important verse of course if you're corrupting your Bible if you have a Bible that you know is corrupt and it's dirty and disgusting and it's not the Word of God and you just want to make money then you better change this verse right for we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God so let's change the wording in that ESV for we are not like so many peddlers of God's Word see they changed it see now and they not only change it but they made themselves liars because that's exactly what the ESV does they peddle their Bible version All right. and then let's see what the NIV says now let's go to NASB first for we are not like the many peddling the Word of God except that's exactly what they do NIV unlike so many we do not peddle the Word of God for profit Oh, they do it for free? No, that's baloney. They're doing it for profit. And it's almost like they admit, yeah, we do peddle the Word of God, but we don't do it for profit. It's just a corruption of the Word of God. They're all liars. And that's why it's so very important to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. Believe that it is directly from God and not from man. Because the Bible is directly from God just as God gave Moses his word gave him tables of stone written with the finger of God 
given directly to Moses, so also is the Bible given directly to us from God. And I know I was going to end it on Second Corinthians 2.17, but let me end it on this one. Second Peter 1, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Bible comes directly from God. The King James Bible is the perfect, pure word of God. Man cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for Revelation chapter 3 coming up.